Good morning. What a wonderful day it is. And it is so marvelous that we are still alive. It is God's mercy and grace. Remember, each day is a gift from God. And I pray that today's meditation shall help you to live your life according to God's plan and purpose. Today's meditation is taken from Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And let me read it for you. They overcame him, and that is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. What is the message in this passage? The power of atonement and the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of a prayer. You have a picture of warfare here. And yes, it is a warfare between us and Satan. The outcome of our victory is guaranteed. The victory for the church, for the believers, is due to the elements of our victory, which is, what are the elements of our victory? Which are the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and a willingness to fight at any cost. The victory in this warfare depends on entirely on our understanding of the atonement of Jesus Christ. If we don't understand the atonement, then we are not in the battle. We are in a parade. And what is the difference? In a parade also you display the weapons, the equipments, and you brag about it. But there is no fire, it is not loaded. None of the weapons will be loaded in a parade. There is, that means there is no fire. But at the same time in a battle, also we carry weapons, but not to display. The weapons we carry in the battlefield are loaded. There is fire inside. And that fire is used to destroy the enemy. For the destruction of enemy. Why is the atonement so central to the Christian life and Christian ministry? Because there is blood. The blood of the Lamb. And what is the word of our testimony? The blood provides the testimony. What did the atonement do for us? What happened on the cross where Jesus died and gave up his life and shed each drop from his body? There is an invisible relationship between the atonement and the principalities and powers and uh, uh, the darkness and the powers of our victory. What does it take for us to evangelize the whole world? The first church and its leaders along with the believers, together they evangelize the whole world empire that time within 100 years. The early church did not have uh, money power. They did not have the kind of transportation that we have today. We can reach anywhere in the world in a short time. And they did not have much silver or gold. But you know what? The early church knew something that we have forgotten. What is it? They knew the source of a power and empowerment and enablement. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Where Jesus said, 
You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. That was the source of a power for this ministry. The book of Acts is a record of men and women of a mighty prayer experiencing mighty power in response to those sincere, earnest prayers. There is no other explanation. Throughout the New Testament, it was prayer and power. Power and prayer. So they always carried along with them the power ministry as well as the prayer ministry. And it is very, very important. Today, there are um, uh, denominational leaders and theologians who have never witnessed a miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in their whole life. And what a sad thing that is. And how prayers play a key role in leading men and women into the kingdom of a light of the Lord Jesus Christ from the kingdom of darkness. You know, the devil is out there. He is ready and he is using any means to discourage men and women from following Jesus Christ and take them back. So some people uh, consciously or unconsciously believe that Jesus died just for a few people and uh, we don't need to try and reach everybody. God already chose a few, that's what some people believe. And we don't need to struggle. My friends, that is a lie from the bottom of hell. And the people are ready to believe a lie than a truth easily. The truth is Christ died for every single uh, uh, member of the human race. In spite of one's color and nationality or uh, language, anything, culture, he died for everybody. You know, there is a panel, there is a difference between a command and a suggestion. A command carries a penalty with it. If you don't obey, you will pay for it, your disobedience. You know, today, what do you witness? The board meeting of the elders of the church and the board meeting of a company all look alike. There is no difference. We develop a wrong theology. And we come up with uh, unbiblical principles that we follow. On the other hand, the biblical principles which gives us victory and all the time success are followed by secular people and they are succeeding in it. And yet, the people in the church in whose hand these principles are given, they're ignoring this and many people don't even know it. And the church doesn't grow. And the membership drops down. And the leader says, thank God, God is cleansing our church. What is the answer to this problem? Get back to the book of Acts. Preach the doctrine of the Bible and the doctrine, especially of the doctrine of atonement. Preach Jesus crucified. Get the power through prayer and prayer and the power are companions. Don't change the message. Preach the message 
with the power of the Holy Spirit, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then go. And Jesus' command is that you must be witness to every kindred and every tribe and every language and every, every culture and every nation. No one is exempted. Everyone must hear this gospel because this gospel is the only answer to the problem of sin and unrighteousness, unrighteousness and wickedness. And so my brothers and sisters, as the book of Revelation says, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, died and shed his blood. And with his blood he purchased men for himself. From where? From every kindred, every tribe, and every language, and every nation under the sun. This is our responsibility. And we need to display and experience the same power and anointing that the first century Christians experienced. And they, within a short time, evangelized the entire world empire, which is Roman Empire. And without any facilities that we are enjoying today. They didn't have silver or gold, but today we can boast that we have plenty of silver and gold. There are there are uh, televangelists and pastors in, 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 in America where they're raising $650 million to buy a jet. They already have a two, three jets. Plenty. But what do lack? We cannot say with boldness and confidence to a layman, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. My friends, let us not deceive ourselves. Now as I close, I pray that you will experience without uh, trying to uh, reason it out and for our failures, we blame others, we blame everybody else and everything else except ourselves. Come on, let us get right with God. Let us seek God with our whole heart and sincerity and ask the Holy Spirit to take hold of us with His anointing and with His mighty power manifesting in us and through us, through signs and wonders and miracles. The word of the Lord that you declare will be confirmed for His glory. Amen. God bless you today. This is a great day. Have a great, wonderful day ahead of you.